Welcome to the first episode of the Village Green Network Q&A. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while, and, you know, uh, I used to do this actually on my blog, Cheese Slave. Um, I, I'm your host, Anne-Marie Michaels. I should introduce myself. Um, but, uh, you know, it takes a while to answer questions uh, on a blog, and I just figured, why don't I do this on video, and that way you guys can just tune in. I'm going to keep each episode short, um, you know, just five or ten minutes, and I'll answer your questions. I'm hoping to do this every week. Um, I am seven and a half months pregnant right now, so soon, I, w I don't know if there will be a time when I will not be recording every week, but um, the point is, I want you to be able to ask your questions and be able to answer questions frequently um, so that, you know, you guys can come and, and get those questions answered. It's been hard. Like I said, with the blog, it was hard even with Facebook, but putting it on YouTube, I think, is really the way to go. So, um, and we will, of course, post all these on our blog as well. So I'm excited to answer your questions. We, we get lots and lots of great questions, and it's a great dialogue, you know. Uh, it's a great way to, <clears throat> to share, not just with, you know, me and you, but with all the people listening who have questions too. Uh, all right, so I'm going to get right into it, um, and I'm going to post this as soon as possible. You know, I, I, I wanted to set up better lighting. I wanted to... Um, have my mic set up properly, but you know, perfect is the enemy of the good. That's my, one of my favorite sayings. And so it's like, let's just get this thing going. So welcome and let's start. Um, okay. The first question is from Sean who is says, and I apologize. I know you asked this a couple months ago, so apologize. It's late, but somebody else may benefit from these questions, even though, uh, we're answering them slower. Uh, Sean says she's looking for, or he or she is looking for a home remedy for pink eye. Any suggestions? Yes. Um, my daughter's had pink eye one or two times, a couple times, and um, we never ended up having to do anything about it. I, pink eye is one of those things that will resolve. I need to make my disclaimer. I'm not a doctor, so you definitely should talk to your doctor. I don't want to ever diagnose or give medical advice to anybody on this show, and I'll say that every single time. Because I get a lot of people asking those kind of questions, and... Um, yeah, you do need to go, go to your doctor. <clears throat> and if you, you know, if you want natural solutions too, the other thing I would say is, is go find a doctor who's a homeopath or a naturopath or somebody who, you know, is trained in that way. I have a wonderful doctor who's an, a pediatrician, who's an MD, and she's also a homeopath. Um, if you're in LA or the LA area, her name's Dr. Lauren Fetter. Um, I'm going to be having a podcast with her soon. So, but that said, <laughs> pink, I do think it's good. If it is pink eye, you should go to the doctor. And again, I go to my, my homeopathic doctor and that's what she will give us is drops. My daughter won't take the drops. So never, she, the, both times she refused. So I just kind of let her recover on her own. It's, it's like a few days that they recover. Um, some people say that raw milk or breast milk is really helpful for pink eye. Um, again, my daughter wouldn't let me put anything in her eyes. So if, if you can get a child to, you know, put some drops of raw milk or, or, or a homeopathic remedy, um, <clears throat> I think you can, I think there's, I'll see if I can put a link in, in the, uh, comments below for, uh, an Amazon link for a homeopathic <clears throat> treatment you can get, um, or a natural treatment. The other things I would increase in the diet are uh, coconut oil and bone broth. So chicken stock, beef stock, those are really helpful for the immune system. Uh, probiotics too. Um, and then uh, cold compress, right? So that's what I got for pink eye. Let's move on to the next question. Katie asks, anyone have a suggestion for a moisturizer to help with redness? I have pretty sensitive fair skin. And I've been using coconut oil, but I'm so red. Uh, I'm breastfeeding, so I can't do any detoxing, and I rarely have dairy. I'd appreciate any suggestions. Uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think a lot of people can be sensitive to coconut oil. 
Um, it depends on your genetics. It depends on where you're from. I know, like, you know, Irish people are pretty sensitive. It depends. Um, and I don't personally think everybody needs to put coconut oil. I mean, it's not, it's great. Coconut oil is great, but it's, you might want to try something else. Shea butter is really good for a lotion. Um, there's also, uh, nat, you know, natural oils. You can use like olive oil. Um, you could use, um, what was I just thinking of? Oh, like a beef tallow or a, a lard. Um, coconut oil has, um, you know, a lot of ingredients in it or elements in it that might cause redness. Most people won't, but could. Um, so, you know, if you, if you find that you don't do well with it, then I would try some of these other types of, um, types of oils. Um, you know, you just want to go with natural oils. Now there's a lot of lotions on the market that don't have any, uh, a lot of bad stuff in them or they don't have any additives and things. So I'll put some of those in the, um, comments below, description below so that, uh, and I'll, these are probably going to be affiliate links. So just to put that out there, if you click on them, I might earn a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'll put some links of, for some lotions that I like. And, um, you know, a lot of times you can do coconut oil if there's a link, uh, sorry, link, if there's a, a lotion that has coconut oil, but it has other ingredients. So maybe it's like coconut oil and shea butter that might be easier for you to handle. So I would try different things and see what works, but I'll put my, some of my suggestions. Okay. Dina says, I'm seriously considering, considering going vegan, but I'm scared to not be able to do it. Should I become a vegetarian as a start? How did everyone do it? Um, and if dairy products say certified humane, can I have those dairy products? What a great question. Um, so I would, you know, I've been a vegetarian before and to be really honest, um, my diet is largely vegetarian. I would never become a total vegetarian because I like to eat, you know, there are things that I like to eat. I really love fish, for example, seafood. Um, and I really like meat. I mean, there's meats that I like, but if, but if left to my own devices, <laughs> I eat a lot of dairy and I eat a lot of, um, plant-based, you know, uh, beans, rice, things like that. I, I, you know, I don't need to eat meat, so I could live without it. Um, but let's talk about it a little bit. Um, for people who I've heard going vegan, you know, want to go vegan. Um, yeah, oftentimes it is easier to start as a vegetarian. And, and I also welcome your comments below, whether you're watching this on the blog or you're watching this on YouTube, please comment below and, um, share your experiences if you're a vegan and, um, how you got started. Um, but yeah, I think, I think for a lot of people, it's easier to start as a vegetarian and then you can, you know, transition to vegan. Um, I really think it depends on what your reasons are for, um, for going vegan or for going vegetarian. Um, you know, if you're concerned about animals, you talk about certified humane, that's really a great reason to, to care about, uh, going vegan and or vegetarian. And what I would say to you is what I would recommend is that you go to the farm and you tour some farms if you can. Um, if you go to the farmer's market and you buy dairy products and eggs from the farmers directly, oftentimes they will let you come and visit the farm. And sometimes they have events. Um, oh, I really recommend that you get to know your farmers. So, so what you could do is say, you know, I'm not going to eat dairy and I'm not going to eat eggs unless I know that these are, um, that I'm comfortable with the way the animals are treated and I'm comfortable because yeah, you're right. I mean, most chickens are raised, you know, in these battery cages and they can't even move around. It's horrifying. Not only are they treated really badly, but, uh, the food that they produce is not very nutritious. So, you know, I don't buy those kinds of eggs or those kinds of cheese or, you know, dairy, unless I have to, unless it's like, uh, you know, for whatever reason, I can't get the kind that I normally get. But so many stores now do carry 
um, eggs. There's there's different kinds of eggs and that's a whole another conversation and it would take a while to go through it but you really want to look for pastured eggs or eggs that are from chickens that are raised on pasture. It's not enough just to be free range um, because they could be free range and then they never leave the area that they're in, the shed that they're in. And they don't even get, they say they have the outdoor past access, but they don't really ever go out. Um, and they can be really crowded. So, you know, I really recommend if you can just start by visiting the farm. Um, so yeah, if you want it to be like a lacto-ovo vegetarian, if your main reason is, is the animals, then I would say that's what I would do. And I do buy, uh, like I said, pastured eggs, free range. I'll get free range if I can't get pastured. You know, if I'm at a store that doesn't have it, but I won't, I, I rarely, in fact, I can't even remember the last time I bought battery eggs, eggs that come from a factory farm. I just don't do it. If I go out to eat, I'll eat eggs, you know, and I don't worry about it. But I mean, you got to really, I'm a big believer in 80, 20, you know, the 80, 20 rule that 80% of the time is really what matters. So I wouldn't go crazy. I would personally, this is just me. I would uh, do the best you can. And, and that's going to make a big impact on the world. Um, for dairy, you want to look for grass fed. So I would even call the manufacturer, the manufacturer, see what, why do we have manufacturers call the farm, uh, and the producer and say, you know, is this grass fed Are the cows, uh, or if you're buying goat milk or sheep, uh, are they out on the pasture? Now they are going to go in if it's a cold environment, you know, winter, they're going to be fed hay in the winter, that's fine. But as long as the weather's good, they should be out on grass. If they're eating, if they're under, you know, if they're in a barn all year long or under a structure and they're eating corn and soy, I don't buy that, that kind of dairy. So that's what I recommend. Now, do I, like I said, do I drink milk or eat cheese or whatever if I'm out in a restaurant? Yes. I don't worry about it. Um, but again, 80, 90% of the time I'm eating at home and, and I'm very careful about what I buy. Um, so if you have questions about, um, what types of, you know, dairy products are grass fed, uh, or eggs are pastured, please comment below and I can answer those questions. Um, also, like I said, if there are vegans out there that want to share, how you guys got started and, you know, about your lifestyle, that's great. And if you want to go vegan, you know, more power to you. I think you should. If that's the diet that's right for you, everybody's different. And we all have a diet that works. So find what works for you. And, you know, I really want to make this a community where we can all help each other. So good luck to you, Dina. Um, I think I'm going to wrap up this episode and I'll do another one. And we'll start putting these out every week. If you have questions, here's how you can ask for the next one. You can ask in the comments. I do ask you to please be considerate in the comments. Um, I'll put that in the show notes as well. Just please be considerate. No foul language and rudeness. We'll just delete those comments. Um, let's uh, ask your questions in the comments, either on YouTube or you can ask on the blog on villagegreennetwork.com. And also, you need to, uh, uh, you probably want to subscribe to our channel. Um, click the subscribe button. And you can also sign up for our mailing list on our blog. I'll put a link to that to sign up for our mailing list. So every time we publish one of these, you'll get an email saying that we have a new one and we'll answer your questions. So thank you so much, everybody, for your questions. I'm going to sign off.